Hi guys, today's topic, geocaching. I've had quite a few requests on uh, how to play the game and uh, what do you need to do to, to get started. So let's get into it. Okay, geocaching. I guess the first thing you got to do is go online to www.geocaching.com and sign up for a free account. Uh, they do have a paid account. It's $30 a year. Uh, you don't really need it. it uh, the uh, paid version gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility in the, in the game, but you don't really need it. You can play the game, the total whole game for free. So you go to geocaching.com, sign up, give yourself a, a, an alias, a name. Uh, my name online is King Period Tut. Somebody picked King Tut already. I had to put a period between. So my, my geocaching name is King Tut. So pick yourself a name. Uh, fill in all the uh, information that's required. And you're, you're ready to actually play the game. Then you on you can use an app on your phone. You don't have to buy a GPS unit. You can use your 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 smartphone, and uh, you can download several different programs. One of them is called C Geo C semicolon or C full colon Geo. Um, that's the one that I use at the moment. It's not too not too bad. Okay, without getting into really too heavy detail, what you do is once you get signed up and you download CGO and you uh, tell CGO your account name online, it goes and looks and finds you and says, okay, we found you. And uh, then you can go to the map section of CGO and uh, see all the uh, geocaches located in your area near you. Um, what you do then is pick one, click on it. It'll tell you everything there is about that geocache, like who hid it, uh, on, on what date they hid it, uh, the size of it, the terrain that it's in, the difficulty, uh, a little bit of a description about the geocache, None of the information in there should really give away where the geocache is hidden, like beside a big rock or beside this post. Or Sometimes they do. It, uh, it all depends. But uh, you don't want to give away exactly where it is. You want people to go out and look for these things. Now, it all depends on the person hiding it, how accurate they wrote down the coordinates of where they actually put it, and then your unit on how accurate the coordinates are on where it is. So you could be meters away from the geocache once you get there and it says on your unit it might say it's right here I'm at ground zero I'm right on top of it but it's not there it may be several meters away from that. Um, once you get to where a geocache is it'll give you well before that yeah, actually it'll give you the, the terrain uh, number, like anywhere from 1 to a 5. A 1 terrain meaning that it's uh, roll up with a wheelchair. You can just walk. Uh, it's flat ground, more or less, to, this, uh, to the geocache. And uh, a terrain of 5, which means uh, you're going to have to do some maybe climbing, ladder, rope, uh, going down, going up. Uh, a canoe, you need a canoe to get across to an island. Uh, the terrain is a lot more tough than just a one. Then you've got the um, size category. Could be anywhere from like uh, a nano to a large. Uh, a nano being a very small tip, tip of my little finger size usually with a magnet in it and a, and a rolled up piece of paper and it's it's hidden magnetized somewhere it doesn't have to be magnetized somewhere but it's hidden and uh, then there's a micro which is about sometimes the length of my little finger same 
distance around or uh, circumference around my little finger um, sometimes a little bit bigger sometimes a little bit smaller then we have a small size which is like a film container size or a small lock and lock box uh, that's considered a small uh, large is like a small birdhouse to large, huge. Uh, I've seen them as big as a tent. Actually, they were a tent. Uh, so there's a lot of different sizes. Um, the terrain and also the uh, difficulty. The difficulty ranges from a 1 to a 5 again. A 1 being pretty easy to find and a five being very difficult to find so you, it, that'll show you all on when you click on uh, the geocache in your smartphone it'll give you all that information and it, it'll give you the description of it and sometimes a little bit of a hint in the description on either what 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 you're looking for hiding them anyone can hide a geocache and there's a lot of different uh, cr uh, criteria on hiding them. Um, you'll never find a geocache several meters away from another geocache. There's a, a, a minimum distance between geocaches and that is 162 meters apart from each other or uh, just over 500 um, between 5 and 600 uh, feet away. So you'll never find one geocache and then find one another one several meters away. That's uh, illegal. So when you go to hide one, you fill out everything online about it. You, you make sure that you know the terrain difficulty uh, between a 1 and a 5. Um, uh, you put all that information on, on uh, geocaching.com. You fill out your description, your, um, like I said, the difficulty, the size of the unit itself, um, the terrain that it's in. Uh, your little bit of a description, then you send it into a reviewer who reviews your geocache and he'll come back and say yes it's okay and it's open up to the public, it's published and then the public can look at the coordinates and uh, go and discover your, your geocaches and then you'll get notified every time someone goes out and finds it and the better someone likes it they may give you a, like a, a, a little favorite check mark saying that this was a cool geocache and uh, you get a favorite and sometimes when you get a lot of favorites on a geocache uh, that entices other geocaches to go find this because there must be something special about it. Uh, when you do find a geocache there's several things that you must do if you do find one uh, you must find the logbook in it, sign the logbook and then put the logbook and everything back the way you found it and uh, put it back in its proper location. Uh, that's, the, that's all that's required. And then you go online and log the find and say that you found it or DNF did not find. I was out of geocaching for a couple of years and a couple of friends of mine uh, kind of talked me back into it again. Uh, there's a, a guy named Darren uh, DSK11 who uh, looks after my mail for me actually. Um, he kind of helped talk me back into this and then there's some girl uh, Gina uh, Lucky Stars who uh, helped talk me back into this. Uh, sometimes you can find hundreds in one day. It all depends if you're going along a trail where there's every 200 meters away or every 162 meters away is another one and another one and it's just continuously down a dirt road somewhere and you know where the next one's going to be and they're easy to find. They're meant to be found quickly so that you can go down and you, you can find the hundred that might be on this one particular road and you can find hundreds in one day or you can find one in one day. It all depends on how you want to play the game, how how far into it you get, how excited you are about getting out and, and searching for these things. And if you don't play the game at all, you don't know that they're there. There could be all over the place. Uh, you walk by them all the time. 
uh, people that don't know about geocaching and don't play the game, uh, we call those people muggles, just like they do on uh, Harry Potter. They're called muggles. They don't know about the game. They don't know what you're doing. So some geocaches are hidden where there's a lot of people walking around. There's, it's very busy with people at certain times of the day. And you don't want to really go and search these things out right in front of all these muggles. Because what happens there is if you're searching around and there's people walking around, they're looking at you and, and you find this, you reach in behind something and you find this and you sign the logbook and you put it back where you found it. Now somebody that doesn't know anything about the game is going to go and see where you, what you're doing there and they're going to grab this thing and they may keep it or throw it in the garbage or they might just put it back. You don't know what they're going to do with it because they don't know that it's geocaching. So when there's people around you got to be very discreet. You can do it in front of other people. Just be very discreet about it or come back at another time when there's not so many people around or when there's none and find it that way. So the muggles you got to worry about. I forgot to mention the size. Uh, anywhere from, like I said, um, uh, a nano to a micro to a small to a large. A nano and a micro are so small that you can't put anything in them. And what I mean by putting something in them is sometimes a, a geocache, if it's a small or a large, will have a lot of little trinket things in them. And the idea behind the trinkets are you you can trade. If you have like a fridge magnet or a, a little figurine, a tiny little figurine that you take with you, you find a small or a large geocache and it's just got a whole bunch of little figurines in it or little things in it and you put yours in it and take one out and you've traded that's another uh, criteria of geocaching if you take something out you must put something in um, you'll find a lot of variety of different things inside of geocaches uh, some things are meant to keep like uh, I usually or not always but I put in something like this. It's called a path tag. It's about the size of a nickel. Then you have uh, geo coins. Like this one here is a bear again and it's you can see by the size of it how big it is. And on the back it's got our power trails. Me and a friend, some friends, a couple of friends. Uh, there's one power trail called Jigsaw. Power saw is another trail and chainsaw is that's the three different trails that we had made uh, with maybe a hundred geocaches in them and you go and find it. So there is a there is a number on the front, I just unfortunately can't show you that again, but uh, that you would go online if you ever find one of these. Uh, you very rarely will find one of these in a geocache because uh, these are meant to keep again and they're sometimes pretty expensive. They can be uh, upwards like of $20 to to uh, buy one of these. Uh, so you don't really want to put a $20 coin. Some of them are much cheaper, but you don't want to put a $20 coin in something and then just have... Yeah, these do move along. You can actually give them a, 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 a what you would like to happen with these. But a lot of people don't put these in a geocache because they're usually kept people like them and like this one here looks like a, a little saw blade you can see the little teeth maybe I can take it out of the bag you can see the little teeth around it and it's called a geocaching coin so you'll find just about anything and everything in a geocache some are to be moved some are not to be moved uh, they're made to just trade some are meant to keep now, as far as hides go, um, where I'm from is Medicine Hat. We have an event here every uh, year, the end of August. It's called the Saw Event, uh, South Alberta Weekend, Southern Alberta Weekend. I prefer South Alberta Weekend. Um, 
It's in the last week in August, and people come from hundreds of miles away to uh, discover the, the geocaches that were hidden for that event. And the local people that are part of geocaching, they hide several new geocaches just for the event, and they're all published uh, on the day of or the day before, and then everybody that has come from wherever uh, they all go out for that day and find as many of those new geocaches as you possibly can. Some people do geocaching for 24 hours. They go out and try to find every single one of them. And uh, there's a couple of people in town uh, that are very good at uh, how they hide or... Um, what the container is and they're very very well known there's there's several of them that are very very good at this um, I hate to pat my own back but I used to be one of them that was uh, that pe people would hear King Tut and they would say oh King Tut has this geocache over there let's go have a look because he always has some some good good things and there's there's quite a few people that have excellent geocaches and people come and find, try to find these particular ones. Um, the reason they want to find mine is because they were uh, not necessarily well built or anything. It's just that sometimes they were right there in plain view. Uh, you drive up, you walk up, you whatever you do, it, they're right there. You see it, there it is. Now you have to Remember, you have to sign the logbook and put everything back the way you found it. So mine are, you found the geocache, yes, but now how do you get into it? Or how do you, where's the paper? Where's the logbook? How do you, uh, how do you sign the logbook if you can't find the logbook? Sometimes it's very, very, very tricky on, you think you found the geocache and it's easy to, uh, to sign the logbook, but not so. So I hope uh, this helps even veteran uh, geocachers. Um, I'm sure they won't get in very much out of this, but any that don't, the ones that asked about geocaching, I hope I've explained a little bit to you on how to get started, how to play the game. Uh, this might help you decide whether you really want to do this or not. Uh, you might have several just around your block, wherever you live. Um, and I appreciate anyone that watches my videos to either comment on on this geocaching saying uh, yeah you've heard about it or you like it or you you are a geocacher or uh, thank you for helping me decide whether I want to be a geocacher or not uh, give me the thumbs thumbs up and comment down below uh, letting me know what you think of the geocaching. Um, and uh, that's just about it for as, as much as geocaching is. And thank you to all my subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for commenting. And anybody that's watching that hasn't uh, subscribed, please do so. Uh, and, and ring the little bell up in the corner. And, uh, okay, so it would be, yeah, up that way. <laughs> Uh, in the top right corner, ring the little bell so that you can be notified anytime a new uh, video comes out, you can be the first to watch. And uh, give me that like, the thumbs up, and uh, subscribe. And thanks for watching my, my channel, The Nomadic Bandman. Thanks for coming out.